Now, in the preceding video, we saw how we could combine V naught A and delta T <coughs> to obtain all the rest of the quantities on our diagram. Now, this diagram looks a little different than the other, but it's uh, the same information. Just have things in different places. You probably won't always, uh, if you draw this diagram, draw everything in the same place. This time, I've got my V bar delta S and delta T triangle in the usual kind of central spot. And then I've got the uh, delta B, A, and delta T triangle here. And I've got the V bar, V naught, V F triangle here. Using green to indicate the quantities in uh, the V bar, uh, the, the delta V A, delta T triangle, orange, the V bar, V naught, V F triangle, and uh, just white for the V bar, delta S, uh, delta T, and with no underlines corresponding to those triangles. Now, I've actually uh, kind of a sneaked in a new triangle, and I did this before. So I'm going to say this is a sneaky new triangle here, and it's uh, V naught delta V V F. I'm not sure if that was done wrong. Uh, and of course, I've got them written in a different order than here, but the order in a triangle doesn't make any difference. Um, but I figure that uh, we simply know that delta V is VF minus V naught, and there's no real content to that except the definition of the change in a quantity, which is pretty universal and which everybody pretty much understands. Okay. Now, the last time we considered what happens if we know V naught A and delta T. Now, on this triangle, yeah, we'd circle V naught and A and delta T in red. Just as before, knowing A and delta T, we can find V bar, because we know two of the three quantities that are combined by the definition of, um, and, and did I say V bar? Uh, delta T, A, and delta V. Okay, I think I might have said that wrong. So uh, we know from the definition of average acceleration how these quantities are related, which is why they make a triangle. Okay, um, and then we can calculate then delta V very easily. We multiply A by delta T, we get delta V. Now that we know delta V, we can use the delta V, V naught, VF triangle, and we simply add delta V to V naught to get VF. So now we know delta V. We started knowing V naught, so we get VF. And then knowing V naught and VF, we find average velocity V bar. And now the only thing we don't know is delta S, just as in the preceding. <coughs> okay, well, without using a diagram, we should be able to recognize that if we know the acceleration and delta T, that allows us to calculate delta V. Now, of course, this takes a little practice, and we'll work on the practice. Then knowing V naught and delta V, well, the initial velocity and change in velocity uh, should be very clear to us that we can find the final velocity. Okay, now, knowing the initial and final velocity, we can find the average velocity. So now I'm going to bring those down here because of what I'm going to combine the average velocity with, which is the delta T, which will give us then our delta S. And if we understand the relationships, we can pretty easily draw this triangle and cement our reasoning. Now, what does our reasoning look like if we've got numbers? Suppose, for example, we have V naught equal 5 meters per second, A acceleration 3 meters per second squared, and delta T equals 4 seconds. Okay? Just based on our understanding of how these quantities are related, not looking at the map or anything like that, what can we determine from this information? Well, we can't put initial velocity together with acceleration and do anything. 
and just initial velocity with our delta t, well, we would have to have an average velocity or a final velocity or something before the delta t would do us any good with the naught. What about a and delta t? Well, yeah, that works. If we know a, which is the rate at which velocity changes with respect to clock time, and delta t, which is a four second change in clock time, we can put these together to see that our change in velocity has to equal 12 meters per second. Now I'll write out the details of that calculation uh, in a minute just in case you need them, but we know that acceleration is average rate of change of velocity with respect to clock time, which means it's change in velocity divided by change in clock time, so acceleration is delta V divided by delta T. Uh, knowing the acceleration in delta T, then, we can find delta V. And it's simply a matter of understanding the acceleration. Uh, okay, we can understand that in terms of the rate of change definition. We can be secure in that. But we should also, after a while, after doing some of these problems, have an intuition that acceleration means the number of meters per second per second of velocity change. So acceleration is the rate of velocity change. We multiply that by the change in clock time at three meters per second every second. For four seconds, our velocity is going to change by 12 meters per second. Just another way of understanding that relationship and a more intuitive way that we can always check out using our more fundamental reasoning in terms of rates, uh, in terms of definitions. Okay, well anyhow, if our change in velocity is 12 meters per second, can we put that together with either the acceleration or the delta t? Well, not really, but if we, and we could put it, well, uh, we could put it together with acceleration and find delta t, but we already know delta t, okay? We put it together with delta t and find acceleration, but we already know acceleration. Can we put the change in velocity together with the initial velocity? Well, yeah, we sure can, because if we take the initial velocity and add the change in velocity, we get the final velocity, which is going to be this plus this 17 meters per second. Now, how do we take initial and final velocities and put them together into another useful quantity? Well, if we know the initial and final velocity, we can find the average velocity or we can find the change in velocity. Now, we already know the change in velocity, but we can certainly go ahead and calculate the average velocity, which is the average between these two is 11 meters per second. Now, having the average velocity, what can we put that together with? Well, average velocity is the average rate of change of velocity with respect to time, et cetera. That's going to be uh, change in position divided by change in clock time. So now we know the average velocity and the change in clock time, so we can find the change in position. And again, intuitively, we know for averaging 11 meters per second that if we know how long we're traveling, we can find our displacement. So we get our displacement equals 11 meters per second times 4 seconds which is 44 meters. Now, all that's great, but at this stage, you kind of need to see the calculations in a little bit more detail. As you get more experience and more intuition, it'll be easier to map out a solution like this, um, and it'll help you understand how to work through the solution. So what we can say is, knowing these three things, I just working from that and from the definitions, we know that delta V equals acceleration times delta T, which is going to be 3 meters per second squared times 4 seconds, which comes out 12 meters per second. The second here dividing one of the seconds in the second squared, so that you end up with just meters per second. Then. What do we do with that? Well, now we know delta V, and we know V naught. So we can say, well, okay, VF 
is delta B plus V naught, which is our 12 meter per second change plus our initial 5 meters per second, which gives us 17 meters per second. Okay, now what can we do with all this information? Uh, well, we know our V naught and our VF, and we can put those together to get our average velocity. We know average velocity is one of the desirable quantities. And it's just the average of initial and final velocities. So that's going to be 5 meters per second plus 17 meters per second over 2. That comes out 11 meters per second. Not just summarizing how I calculated these quantities. Okay, and then what else do we have? We have delta S, which is going to be V bar delta T, and that's going to be 11 meters per second multiplied by 4 seconds, which is 44 meters. At that stage, we have everything. Now, another very helpful thing we can do is to list all these quantities. Just make a list <coughs> so we know what quantities we're comparing. And we should be able to list these quantities. Okay, well, our list could consist of, I'm going to put it this way, in no particular order, acceleration, initial velocity, final velocity, delta S, and delta T. Now, there is a little method behind listing these first before I list delta V and V bar. And the reason for that is that everything that we do, we're going to be able to model in terms of just these five. But if we're trying to understand and reason things out, we need these two as well because they're so fundamental, especially V bar, which comes directly from one of our definitions. And since our acceleration comes from our definitions, and our definitions involve change in velocity, we really want to have change in velocity here. And we see how we've used these quantities in the reasoning process and how they're interrelated by the three basic triangles. That you should always know how to draw those three basic triangles, so you can always put them together into a diagram. And you can put the diagram down in any order as long as you have all the arrows in the right place or all the connections in the right place. That's going to be easy enough. Uh, with practice, it's not going to be easy the first time you do it uh, on your own, but there it is. Now, what did we do? Okay, we knew V naught A and delta T. And I'm going to circle those, V naught A and delta T. So those are already kind of checked off our list. We want to check off all these quantities. Okay, so next thing we want to do is we want to start finding these other quantities. If we look at these other quantities, we can ask ourselves, do we have enough information to find VF? Well, from AV0 and delta T, we don't. Do we have enough to find delta S? No. Nah. Delta V? No. But, um, I'm sorry, delta V? Yes. Acceleration times delta T. We don't have enough to find VR, so we're compelled to find delta V, which we've done here. Just another way of organizing our thinking. What about VF? Well, now that we know delta V, we can put that together with V naught, and we can get VF. And now that we know V naught and VF, we might as well go ahead and find V bar. And we kind of have to do that anyway. Okay, and then knowing V bar, we can put that together with our delta T and get our delta S, and now we have all the quantities, and we've completed the analysis of the uniformly accelerated motion for the case where the initial velocity is 5 meters per second, acceleration is 3 meters per second squared, and time interval is 4 seconds.